tell them this is how we should be was. Despite I tell story, I portray beauty as well. It has to do with my color, the choice of color I use in painting. Well, mostly I believe that if a painting is done, apart from story, it's going to be hanged on the wall, and it's going to be it should be a kind of thing that will draw your place, notwithstanding. So I put down its consideration as well. I make sure I mix my color and make it. I use a beautiful color. I mean, beautiful color, just like when you see it. Apart from the stories, you feel like oh, this one I can easily take, you know, get and hang on my wall. So these are the. It's a rainy day in Oshodi. You know, it's something that we have to keep remembering. It's not something that we just have to forget overnight. This is how it was some time ago before uh, Governor Fashala came in. And it was so much interesting. We have to tell us the fact that is the truth. So much interesting. We artists have a lot to benefit from it because we keep getting a lot from seeing crowds. But after some time, we have to document it for other people to see. And that is what brought about this. Because now I have a lot of new shows that I do. It's not as tedious as this. Because you won't see these crowds anymore. I try to, you know, to make an impressionistic way. So that I to achieve it. And I try to put some, you know. Like when, the, the way you are looking at the Osho, the, there are some things that are not divine. As well, I mean, the way you paint at times show the way that place it, it looks like at times, you know. Because when you are trying to play something rough, you have to put some idea of uh, impressionist take and uh, style to bring out to make that place to look, you know. I, I about apart from telling you about the play, you still say that the painting itself look at this exactly how Oshodi looks like. And there are others who embrace curves and texture with inspiration coming from the most usual of places. Most of my paintings uh, depict ladies. I like to express myself with my ladies because the ladies, they have more curves. So and they radiate more emotions. So I find it easy to express myself through my female figures. That I try to talk about attitude and character. Um, I speak about uh, uh, someone's uh, intention, mind. Well, actually, I'm the artist, but I try to travel it into someone's mind and, and bring out what a person up inside of them. I paint like a child. You see, when you see a child paint, they don't mix their colors. Red is for red, blue is for blue. Their lines are straight. So that's the way I paint. When you see my paintings, you see the colors, red, sharp blue, and all that. I don't mix the professional thing. It's still professional, but at the end of the day, I just see my colors are just bright. And I don't know how I came about that anyway, but it's just, you can't explain some things, but you just keep doing it, and you're just used to doing that. And it, Initially, when I started working, I mainly work on a flat surface, and mostly the, the people I'm introduced to, maybe some the art collectors, they like telling me, oh, could I be able to work on and I have a feeling it's a work, and I, I like a work that you can, you can also, I, 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 line, I like a work that you, you can feel. I mean, I am an artist, but I'm bored with realism. And through it all, they stand to grow, to learn, and to conquer. When Art House returns, it's off to Ondo State, the southwestern part of Nigeria, to honor a man who has written his name in the stars. So join us again. You can enjoy Art House on any of these platforms. after leaving the stage of life, Dio Fagoa is still able to hold this crowd hostage for three days at his homeland, Akure, in Ondo State. Top officials and eminent scholars left the comfort of their homes to celebrate a man who has done the country proud through the power of his pen. I must say that 
what struck me when I was reading the Bodhya there was the fact that Fagwa also placed emphasis on specialization. That everybody is needed. We must all join hands to develop society. He had particularly instructed to the younger generation to take note with the death of viable role models in our society today was celebrating the legacy of someone who lived his life with such deep conviction and a missionary sense of purpose, such that 50 years after his demise, his legacy still involves great passion. It's time that we use our education to lift our people in consonant with the submission of people from in all his one of those he inspired is Nobel laureate Walisho Yinka, who graced the occasion and is hailed as a teller of tall tales. One episode of Fagora is sufficient to enable our seizure of that distinction as we settle from an episode from uh, settle for an episode from Igolu Mari, since this is still fresh in my mind, being one that I last translated. I've been obsessed with translation of other voices within this wall salute the contributions this master made to the literary world, even though he stuck to his guns and wrote only in Yoruba language. The Yoruba culture is not obscure. It's uh, been elevated in many parts of the world through the works of art, through the literature, uh, through cultural activities and festivals. But I think we need to do more than we are doing. And part of the effort of uplifting and elevating the Yoruba culture and language is this conference that we are putting together in uh, honor of one of the foremost users of Yoruba indigenous language in writing. Fagunwa was a man who was highly gifted by God. Even 50 years after his death, I cannot still realize or understand how he wrote those books. Uh, Naiko is working on, um, you know, uh, organizes Nigerian indigenous language program to you know, encourage the teaching and learning and speaking of our indigenous languages. Because once we do not learn, our children do not learn our indigenous languages, you know, they will die gradually. And just around the corner, a young poet ensures that Fagawa's book breathes life. For others, this is also a pointer to all those putting pen to paper in their little corners to keep the faith as they too will be honored for good writing, no matter the language they choose. Popularly known as Dio Fagunwa, Daniel Olorun Femi Fagunwa is a man of many firsts. He was born in 1903 in Okeigbo, Ondo State, Northwest Nigeria. He was a teacher and the author who pioneered the use of Yoruba language in novels. After entering a literary contest of the Nigerian Education Ministry in 1938, Fagunwa wrote his Obojuo Deninui Bwe Rumole widely considered the first novel written in the Yoruba language and one of the first to be written in any African language. While Osho Inka translated the book into English in 1968 as The Forest of a Thousand Demons, first published by Random House and again by City Lights in September 2013. Fagua's later works include Igbo Lodumari, The Forest of God in 1949 Ireke Onibujo in 1949, Expedition to the Mount of Tort in 1954, and Aditu Olodumari in 1961. 